Imagine creating a checkout bot that can check out a product in seconds. I'm going to do that in this video. But we all want to get the limited items that drop and sell out within seconds. And the only way we can do this is by using a bot. Now, some of us can buy a bot, so why not just create our own? Now, creating a bot is easier said than done. The worst thing that can possibly happen is you have a bot, and when you run it, it blows up your CPU. To avoid that, you need to pick the best framework to use to create your bot. So let's do some research and let's find this framework. I think we found our winner. So the core of our bot is going to be its ability to access the HTML of the page and interact with elements based on the passed in attributes of whatever element that we're, we want a puppeteer to either click or type in, et cetera, et cetera. Because at the end of the day, we want our bot to behave exactly like a user. So the fastest way to do that is by using the Chrome developer tools. And what this allows you to do is literally get the HTML of any element on the page. So we want puppeteer to click this button, add to cart, and the only way we can do that is by telling puppeteer, hey, I want you to click this specific element this element that has this class name. So we're gonna use a class to identify the element. So remember how I said we need a way of telling Puppeteer, hey, I want you to click this element and we copy the class of the add to cart button. Well, what we're gonna do is pass in the class name and the quotations, bracket, and it's gonna get that element. And what we, what we want Puppeteer to do is click that element, right? We wanna click the button. So we do that. And if I run this program now, what it should do is it should click add to cart. And there you go. Now all we have to do is repeat this process for all the buttons up until we get to the billing information page. You guys saw how fast I wrote that code? That's called post editing. So at this point in the program, what we did is we clicked all the buttons that will get us to the delivery page. So this is the last button that we click. And what should happen is it should take us to this page right here. So let's run this program again and see what happens. Control C, run it, and I'll see exactly what happens. So. It has the cart. We got it. So because these elements have IDs, we're just going to grab each element in this form using its corresponding ID instead of its class. Just because identifying element by its ID is much simpler and more trustworthy. So I realized we're going to run into a problem. What Puppeteer does is it types in whatever you wanted to type in whatever field. But for city and zip code, there is already text in it. So what Puppeteer is gonna do is say we live in the city of Baltimore, it's gonna do this. And that's obviously wrong. So we have to find a way of somehow clearing the text so that we can write Baltimore. Wow, look how smart that is. I love Stack Overflow. So I think we have delivery done, so we're gonna test that right now. There you go. So now we gotta click this button. We already know how to do that. And then we can move on to the payment section. What we have to do for the payment section is 
It's just the same process really. Get the HTML element of card number and CVV as well as expiration dates and just click review your order. So let's do that real quick. You want to always have some type of delay just so you don't accidentally type in a field that doesn't exist yet. So I wrote all the code that should fill out all the information for these fields right here, including card number, CV, month and year. Phone number is already filled out, now I just need to click this button, that click. Okay, so now this should take care of the entire thing section. So now we got to the place order page guys. So now we're literally one click away from checking out a product within seconds I wrote the last line of Presumably this entire program. So what it should do is click this place order button and It should check out the product now if you guys really want to test you can put in your real credit card number But again, I use a fake credit card number got online. So if I click place order like if you look at this right here it's going to take us back to the payment page. See right here because you know, fake credit card number. Whoops. Now we're going to use our program to test this. And if it does the exact same thing, then we know that we have successfully created a checkout bot. All we have to do is run the program one more time and see if it takes us back to the payment page if we click place order. Or if you put your real credit card number in, it should say order successful. Order truth right here. Click place order and it will take us back to the payment page. We did it. And if you guys put your real credit card number in, it should have checked the product out successfully. We did it, guys. We created a bot that can check out your product in seconds. And before I explain the last part, I want you guys to leave a like and comment down below if you want me to make more videos like this. Now, my last comment is this bot can be optimized further, it can be made even faster. And the way to do that is by decreasing the delays I set throughout this program, which is denoted as the page that I wait for line. So if you guys enjoyed this video, again, leave a like. And I want to thank you guys all for watching. Peace out, dude. Peace out, dude. Peace.